What's up guys, welcome to the channel. So real quick, I just wanna show you what I'm doing here. Um, the stock ESC that comes in this plane, uh, I don't know why they've started to do this, but I'm noticing that a lot of these companies, they're starting to go to these XT60 connectors and I'm just not a fan. I think the Dean's plugs are a lot easier, a lot more simplistic. Um, so what I have here, is a upgraded 45 amp ESC that I bought for all my 64 millimeter planes. All of them have one in it. Um, but uh, the one that I sent to Casey uh, has this in it. I actually sent it as part of his like gift uh, or his winning uh, the saber, my old saber. And um, this, um, yeah, 45 amp with a. I think it's got an internal, yeah, 5 amp BEC. Okay, so first things first with this, uh, the wires are crossed like this for a reason um, because that's the way it needs to be plugged in. So you have to plug it in like this. So those wires have to come straight out of that. And then I believe it was blue, yellow, red, like that. Uh, don't ask me how I remember that. I've just changed these out a lot, uh, swapping them from different plane to different plane. I kind of just figured it out. But these two have to be crossed, uh, and then it's blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red. Yeah, that's right, blue, yellow, red. Um, or blue, yellow, black, blue, yellow, no, blue, yellow, red, that's right. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, um, so first things first is all these free wing planes, when you get them, um, there is going to be a zip tie holding the other ESC on. So uh, I'll be right back after I snap that and uh, we'll start putting in this new e ESC. All right, guys, so there it is. The EDF back in with the 45 amp ESC right there. Uh, is it a little bigger than these uh, 30 amp ESCs that uh, go in here? Yeah, they are. But I tell you what it, it, what, what it does do is it moves this ESC up a little further. That way I could fit all my stuff in it. Um, the batteries are now smaller. That's going to make a huge deal. So now that's all plugged in. Got that all good to go. Um, the ESC has already been programmed for high output for OutRunner. So uh, that's done. All we have to do now is get ourselves a piece of Velcro and put it there just as a, a cautionary. Um, I just never trust the strap completely. Uh, so we'll put ourselves a piece of Velcro there. <clears throat> we'll go get a receiver. We'll go get the gyro and we'll put it in here. Uh, I'm going to fly it first. I'm going to fly it first with the gyro turned probably about halfway up on both aileron and elevator. Um, and then once I get her trimmed in and she's good to go, then I'll take that, um, that gyro and I'll turn the elevator completely off and the ailerons just barely on like maybe 10, 10% to 15% and the only reason I'm turning them up that that much is because of the hand launch. It just makes the hand launch a lot easier. Uh, if she gets rocking on you and she wants to tip stall on the, on the hand launch, uh, that gyro will kick her back over a little bit and keep her from tip stalling. Uh, but once she gains speed, once she builds up speed, then it's no big deal, it's no problem. Uh, she, You don't even need the gyro in it. Uh, and not to mention, if you have the gyro turned up too much in these little guys, they start wing rocking like a son of a bitch. And that's the last thing you want to happen when you're flying is to hit full throttle and you're coming down out of a dive and she starts doing this number on you. And then sometimes they can overcorrect so much that they cause you to crash. So, uh, you gotta be careful with the gyro. Sometimes gyros are, are not a good thing. That's why I always turn them down minimally. Um, and not to mention the gyro, the particular gyro that I use, all, it automatically presets um, some expo and some uh, rates in. Um, so that way um, you're not at full rate with, you know, no expo. This uh, this particular gyro that I use, it actually slows the roll rate down. It slows your turn rate down. Um, it slows the elevator pitch. Um, so, uh, yeah. A lot of fun guys we're almost there i just got to go grab a receiver and the gyro put it in here put some velcro in here and we're gonna go take this bad boy out and toss her around for a couple flights dave's rc peace so real quick guys while i'm here at the charging station i want to show you guys this is the old 1800 milliamp admiral batteries here are the new ones look at this you guys 
And they're about the same thickness, actually. Actually, this one's a little thicker, but the thing that uh, I like about it is that this one's longer and it takes up more room in the battery hatch in the small 64 mil jets. This one's shorter and thinner. This is these these are going to work so much better. And as far as weight goes, yeah, this one's definitely feeling a little a little heavier. Um, it may not be. It may just be me. Um, All right, I'm gonna shut it off. This thing's weird like this, you guys. Then you gotta turn it back on again. Um, make sure it's all on there. 153 grams. Yes, it is. It actually is smaller by about nine grams. So, yeah, 153, 145, 144, 144, are they all, oh, see, when I look, that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying, guys, look, not even the same exact battery is going to weigh exactly the same. Look at that, that one says 146. 145, 144. This one's actually about 144. This one's about a gram heavier. Yeah, a gram heavier. Definitely a gram heavier. Compared to the old one, which is 153. So yeah, like nine grams heavier, guys. All right, uh, I thought I would just show you guys that, a quick comparison to uh, the old Admiral and the new Admiral. Um, the old one's longer, it weighs more. Um, yeah, so good deal Admiral, uh, making these a little bit more compact. Uh, this is gonna work uh, really nicely in that saber, I can't wait. Um, but that's it guys, uh, we'll be back. All right guys, so uh, <clears throat> one last little clip here before we go and we throw this bitch up in the air. Uh, I've got my Velcro in, I've got my receiver and gyro in. Um, now all we have to do is plug the battery in, make sure that the EDF is going in the right direction, which it should be, um, based on me taking these uh, ESCs in and out so many times. Um, and then all we have to do is put our control horns on our, our control rods on and uh that's it she's ready to go i was putting her together last night you guys and the wing fell and it dung against the box like i haven't even flown it yet you gotta be kidding me arg arg but i can guarantee you right now if you guys ever get one of these planes you'll notice that that is going to be a common thing that you do right there that is going to be the most common thing that you do with these planes is your wings are going to look like pretzels all the way up and down by the time you're done the back side not so bad the front side it's going to be dung all the hell and it's just hanger rash it's all it's going to be is hanger rash um that's it um i was going to put the drop tanks on it but i remember last time i put the drop tanks on these i ended up ripping them off because one bad landing or one crooked landing and they freaking rip off anyways not to mention uh just putting them in there and gluing them in is not good enough you actually have to put a piece of carbon fiber in the tip and then stick it into the wing and then glue it in. Uh, if you don't do that, they're just gonna pop right off uh, as soon as you have like one little rough landing, they're gonna break right off. Uh, I did it several times before I was like, you know what, screw it. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is these control clevises right here, these, um, the control horns for your ailerons. Um, sometimes if you land too rough or too hard, you'll break those. Um, they actually get brittle over time anyways, and they'll end up breaking on their own. But um, I'm trying to figure out something that I can do to protect those. Um, maybe just put some like plastic skis or something there, or skids. Um, yeah, I haven't figured it out yet, but I will. I'll figure out what I'm gonna do. Just something like here. 
that'll raise that up high enough so that it doesn't hit the control surface when I land. But uh, yeah, guys, um, we're almost there. I got the batteries charging now. Um, I probably will go ahead and plug this in just to see where we're at. Um, the gyro probably will need to be um, switched. There's a couple, there's switches on there that reverse everything and make everything go backwards. So if I pick it up and it's rolling the wrong way or it's pitching the wrong way, uh, instead of taking the gyro out and moving it and repositioning it, I can just click the switches and reverse. But then if you reverse it on there, you have to go into your radio and reverse it back because when you flip the control surface here on this, it's actually flipping the whole control surface. So if you're pitching up like this and it's backwards on the pitch and you switch it down there, and not only is it switching it for the pitch to the gyro, but it's also switching the pitch on your, your radio itself. So that is a big mistake, common mistake that I have made with this particular gyro. You have to go into the radio. If you switch the ailerons or you hit a switch on this, on this gyro, you have to go into the radio and switch it back or else your, 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 uh, throw, or your, uh, your surfaces are going to be moving uh, backwards. And uh, you guys all know what happens when you take off with your surfaces backwards. I don't have to point it out or say who are names, but I've done it twice. I did it with my big twin 80 millimeter say, or, uh, um, uh, A10 Warthog. Uh, that was scary, uh, absolutely freaky. And I was flying in the snow a couple of years ago with the Tempest. I had some makeshift skis on it, uh, just two big chunks of foam that were rounded off on the bottom. I made them into skis. And when I got in the air, I realized my ailerons were backwards. And I'm telling you right now, guys, there's no scarier thing. Um, not just because your ailerons are backwards and you might lose your plane, but for the fact that you're, you're, you're not, you're, the plane is not being, is not, you're not being able to control the plane the way you're used to. You're, you have to start thinking backwards all of a sudden. And it could potentially crash into someone, something, a house, a car. Um, you know, it could, anything could happen. So you got to be careful, you guys. Make sure your surfaces are correct. Do your do your uh, do your surface checks. Do your control surface checks before you throw this thing in the air, or throw any plane in the air, or take off with any plane. Um, yeah, guys, um, almost there. Uh, I'm gonna get this thing plugged in now. I didn't screw these screws in all the way on the bottom because if I did and the fan's going backwards. Well, I'd have to take these screws all the way back out again. And the thing about these screws is they, they only mount into wood. So there's wood underneath there that's glued onto the fuselage. And the more you take those screws in and out, in and out, in and out, the softer those holes get. And the softer those holes get, um, they could start getting loose while you're flying. And you don't want that. So um, if you ever have to take the body off or take the wings off of the body, just go hit it, hit those holes with some thin CA let it dry a little bit um any kind of glue really i mean you could use gorilla glue too gorilla glue gr glue works really really nicely because when it hardens it hardens to like a plastic almost like a hard plastic uh, so gorilla glue works as well it just takes a little longer to set up um, and you don't want to use a lot of gorilla glue because if you use a lot of gorilla glue uh what will happen is it, it when it gorilla glue dries it it foams up it like does this expansion thing where it foams up uh, and what that's intended to do is just to get into all the cracks and crevices that uh, you can't see with your naked eye. Um, that's why the Gorilla Glue does that. It expands while it dries because it's actually filling in all the cracks and crevices that you didn't see, that you didn't uh, glue. But that's it, guys. Um, almost there. We'll, uh, be, we'll be back in a few minutes here. I'm going to check this. Um, I'm going to check this out and see if everything's going the right way. Dave's RC. Peace. All right, guys, last little segment here before we end it. Um, it's going to be too dark to fly tonight, so it's all. what I'll do is it's all set up for tomorrow. I can't believe how weak and pathetic these 1,800 milliamp batteries right here, these 30C ones, that these, these are about four years old, and they are absolutely horrible, man. They are ridiculously weak. Uh, this one's fully charged, and it's like putting, like, it's like nothing. It's like... It's pathetic uh, but as you can see we got the gyro going the right way the gyro is probably turned up about 25% all around I'll start out there fly it once trim it in and then I'll turn the elevator um, gyro off or down like pr to pretty much nothing 
and the ailerons will be at about, like I said, between 10 and 15%. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it. She's all set. She's ready to go. I got everything that's left. Right, up, down, everything's going the right way. Oh, I can't, I can't get over how smooth. Excuse, oh my God, excuse me, guys. Um, one thing that I do want to do is I want to calibrate this ESC with my throttle now before I forget to do it uh, and we're not getting the punch that she's supposed to get. Uh, hold on, guys, we'll be right back. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, uh, real quick. Uh, let me let me set this over here like this because uh, you know me being a fan of you know just things that look nice. I could have bought this probably the same table at Walmart for like, God, who knows, you know, 150 bucks, 200 bucks. No, not my wife though. Not my wife. She has to spend you know 600 dollars at a top end place for a table and chairs. Like I said, that I could have got at Walmart for like 150 bucks. So yeah. Anyways, um, God bless her. She likes to have nice things, and I don't mind that. I like to have nice things too, but uh, <laughs> come on now. We could have got this for 150 bucks, and look, there's already little scratches on it, but that's not because of me. It's probably the kids or whatever. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Um, but here it is, guys, the Sabre, all done, ready to go. Um, we're going to take her out here in a little bit, and we're going to go throw her in. There's absolutely no wind. Uh, I'm not liking the gloominess, though. Uh, these planes really don't show up very well when it's gloomy out like that, but I'll keep it close. Um, but, uh, yeah, guys, we'll be back. Dave's RC. Peace.